This right here gonna be a cakewalk. One thing that I will say at the start of this is this whole like Heiachi showcase felt like a reaction to the player's reaction to Heiachi, which if you were on the internet over the past week, you know was very negative. Players were looking at everything that he could do from mid electrics to his ultimate form, guard breaks, one one two wall splats, uh, minus 10 hell sweeps, uh, this hell sweeps not staggering, what was it, uh, heat form, I can't remember, but as I was watching this Heiachi showcase, it seems like they saw the player's negative reaction and they wanted to try to calm everyone down and say Heiachi was not that powerful, but then also what I noticed they were uh, saying as well, they were talking about how usually with past Tekken games, they released the game in arcades first and they were able to do a little bit more tuning and balancing before releasing it to consoles and and just a larger audience and they were saying this time for Tekken 8 they couldn't do that which is why the game is in the state that is currently in and they said that they want to like add things like they're doing the online practice and whatnot so basically there's they see all the you know chaos that's unfolding and they're just trying to say like hey we need more time to do this we don't have arcades um, and also Heiachi isn't as crazy as he seems now whether or not that is true only time will tell but also on the topic of Tekken 8 this is just something that I said in general General, the fact that Street Fighter can release their game in a finished state, uh, no balancing needed for a couple of months, and the Tekken 8 wasn't able to do that. I mean, when you talk about these games going head to head, point one for Street Fighter 6, right? But let's continue. Something that came as a surprise to me was the announcement of the European Tekken Cup this is separate from the Tekken World Tour and it's only a tournament circuit that takes place in Europe and the reason why they're doing this just for Europe is because Europe makes up a large portion of the player base you have a tweet here that talks about how many copies uh, Tekken 8 sold in specifically the EU but then you have other tweets as well where Harada said in the past that Europe makes up 50% of the player base so it makes sense that they hone in on that area get them a tournament circuit to not only fuel the competition, but also move around and connect a lot of these places and basically just build up the player base in a very, very uh, strong area as is, right? Um, what they also said, and I thought this was interesting, the tuning team tried to make every character in Tekken 8 unique instead of trying to make them all have the same tools. The example that they gave is like in Tekken 7, they would every character needs to have a 13 frame attack or something for you know fairness, right? Let's make it fair and let's make every character have these tools that's necessary to really compete. And they were saying like they did that for Tekken 7, but it kind of made the game feel boring in a way. And with Tekken 8, they wanted to like let every character really tap into their playstyle. And two things. I want to say about that one I think that's what Tekken players uh, want is Tekken players look at what other characters have and say hey give my character a 15 frame this give my character a while standing 12 frames that right and the developers were trying that in Tekken 7 and we saw how outrageous that game got in terms of bloat and with Tekken 8 they said they wanted to just focus on making every character special and every character uh, shine in their own way so your character may not get a 13 frame whatever or this or that but then at the same time when we say that with Heiachi specifically they gave him a lot of tools he was lacking from Tekken 7 uh, he now has it in Tekken 8 right so sometimes they say something but when you look at like an individual character or the newest character the idea the two aren't adding up right um now when we start to talk about Heiachi Mishima they were specifically talking about his mid electric which once again a lot of people on Twitter was talking about and uh they did clarify and say this is something that he was given to make the character more accessible because a lot of people struggle with Mishimas if we look at the data in the past for Tekken 7 the Mishimas are some of the worst performing characters in the whole game and the same is also true in Tekken 8 even though Jin Kazama specifically is much stronger than his Tekken 7 counterpart now on the topic of how powerful Heiachi Mishima is, JDCR said that he is not broken, not broken. And this is something that uh, a lot of players who was experiencing the, the character at Red Bull was also saying. And this is why I was saying that even though everyone is saying a lot of sayings being thrown around, but even though everyone is saying Heiachi Mishima looks OP, let's wait and see how he actually turns out. And throughout this whole uh, showcase, they were just really trying to emphasize that he's not broken. Once again, responding to the player's reaction because, you know, this is Heiachi Mishima. A lot of people thought that this guy would inject the player base with a lot of energy and a lot of life, but 
really he didn't do that. Uh, I'm not going to say things got worse, but the trajectory kept going. So they're try so they're just trying to put everyone back on course and sort of calm everyone down. Now, what I thought was interesting about this whole thing is even though JDCR said that Heiachi's not broken, Joka said that Heiachi is very ridiculous was the quote. And in the expedition match Joka versus JDCR, he wanted to showcase that. Now, this is the first time I've seen very high competitive uh, level uh, play with Heiachi and he did look uh, interesting, fun to watch. Um, and even though these two guys only had about an hour to play with the character, so they weren't doing like everything perfectly or maximizing the character, it was interesting. I do want to see how it progresses. Now, when you shift over to Twitter, the Tekken account is celebrating 30 years of support. You know, it's the 30th anniversary for Tekken 8 this year. They also were celebrating 300,000 followers on Twitter. When you think about it, that's pretty low for the main Tekken account. But also what they were doing on Twitter is talking about the account suspension measures. And they said, this is something we've seen a couple of times now but they were banning people for intentionally disconnecting that's plugging people who cheated inappropriate customization player names and chat messages i also uploaded a short where i was talking about how they're trying to implement this new plug uh, anti-plug measurement it's not really an anti-plug measurement but it's something to address plugging when someone plugs they want the ghost to take over and continue the match seamlessly to where you don't even know that the player left now there was some people who was bringing up the idea of well what if the ghost beat me what if the ghost starts to perform better than the player was some people feel like that's unfair and a lot of people are just uh you know falling back to the idea of simply give me the win if i win regardless of the fact though they definitely need to step up their anti-cheat measures because you have an example like this where someone is on twitter uh and they're just full-on exposing someone there is a god of destruction fang player who's just boosting through the ranks you can look at the wiki wiki and see all of their data all of the matches they won and and when you can see people cheating so blatantly uh, so effortlessly um, this is the thing that makes people not even really want to try and rank feel D motivated in rank why does why does rank matter when you have two fang mains boosting in rank you're already playing fang that's boosting as is right so they just need to clamp down on a lot of these things that's happening a little bit more and then also one final thing we haven't talked about this in quite some time but the replay channels, even though a lot of the players like it because they get to see a lot of high level gameplay that they normally wouldn't be able to see, um, the people who are in said videos still do not like it. Fergus, for example, is calling the replay channels vultures because, you know, they take the gameplay of uh, Fergus and other competitive players, right? And then also Fergus and uh, other competitive players are also pointing out how those replay channels doesn't even put in the effort to get their names right, the regions they're from right, and and it's just typos across the board like if you're going to take something and you know upload it to youtube um you can at least make the effort to make sure you know you you say their name right or you put the location right and all these things right it, it at least shows that you care these replay channels obviously aren't going anywhere uh it's done for many other games before and Harada and Michael Murray has been completely ignoring it which shows basically that it's free game for Tekken thank you for watching and bye bye